Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to another Uncle Hack Podcast. How are you, ladies and gentlemen, those listening, those tuning in? Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sticking with me all the way into the new year. What's going on with this fucking TV behind me? Connection lost. Start this over. This is awesome. In the Navy, we'll be sucking dick all day. In the Navy, in the Navy. Welcome to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. How are you? Good, great, grand, beautiful. Well, I mean, the world is a sacred place, you know. The world is a place of freedom, of free speech. And free speech comes at a cost. And it's uh, at $120 a month, according to TELUS. So that way you could download Twitter to get banned off of it. Wow. The president of the United States gets his Twitter taken away. And we're over here fucking hooting and hollering. I swear we live in the dumbest fucking society ever. I, we, we do. I feel like we're in a movie. And it's a bad one. The script was poorly written. It's like that arts kid from... Uh, remember the arts kid that was in your class? And he always thought he was going to make it in Hollywood. And it's like, listen, we're from small town Alberta. No one gives a shit about your fucking gay sci-fi movie. It's already, it's already been wrote, you fucking Star Wars nerd. It's always the Star Wars nerds that think that they're going to amount to shit. And they never really get anywhere, you know. They're, uh, every guy that I, that, like, what's, I, I never got into Star Wars. And I'm not trying to be one of those guys like, oh, look at me, I'm cool. I never got into Star Wars. I'm not gay. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I, I like, every time you meet somebody that's completely obsessed with Star Wars, it's always like, oh, uh. Yeah, I got a Boba Fett. I got a Boba Fett blow-up doll that fucks me every night before I go to sleep, before I take a bubble bath. That's also Star Wars bubble bath. And he was like, oh, so uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm uh, I'm a manager at a pet store. <laughs> Not that it's a horrible job, especially right now. You're pretty much deemed essential. Unless, you're, uh, unless your province or state has shut down everything there's an 8 p.m curfew in, in quebec but it's always it's always those people you know oh i love star wars what do you do during the day oh i'm uh i'm a manager at the local 7-eleven yeah that's what i do and then when i get a paycheck i uh pay a little bit of rent that's what i do i pay a little bit of rent and then i head on over to ebay to see what kind of memorabilia i can pick up for a good discounted price hmm how does that sound for a hobby Fuck me, you're on it. Not dissing anybody that has a hobby, but it just seems like the Star Wars people are always the ones that are just, just below a little bit. Eh? Just a little behind, you know. They're about uh, three meters short of a 500 meter dash, yeah? That's what seems to be, the, 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 maybe that's the issue, you know. Instead of having a chromosome more, they got one less. Fascinated by the little fucking spaceships shooting bullshit at one another. It's gotta be. Who am I to judge? Who am I to fucking judge? Yeah, but it's crazy. We're living in a pretty, pretty sacred time. A lot of people getting purged off of... I know about three of my friends that have had their YouTube channels or their uh, live streams purged off of certain sites. And... uh the shit that happened at Capitol Hill is just wild to me. It is just wild. It's so funny to watch these idiots. It's, I mean, yeah, oh, it's a horrific event. But it's so funny to me to watch these morons get inside the Capitol, uh, the Capitol building. And once they get in, yeah, the first thing that they thought to do was shit and piss all over the place. What a Neanderthal way of thinking, hey? The first thing that came into your mind, you're like, hey... Pelosi's office, I'm going to take a giant coiler on her fucking desk, that cunt. That's hilarious. To, like, that's the first, 
thing that came through your skull. So obviously they went in with zero plan, unless that was the plan. And then like, the, hey, congrats, congrats. That's a great bit. I applaud you. Wonderful bit. Great, great job. Great job. But if it's like, clearly it wasn't. The guy with the fucking, with the coonskin hat and, and fucking horns on his head. Now that is just, that is just beautiful. You can't, you can't script this shit. If you said to me, actually, that's a fucking lie. The way this year's going, if you said, guess what? Within the first two weeks of 2021, there is going to be a guy in a coonskin hat with horns on it. His face is going to be painted with the stars and bars on it. And he's going to be basically taking over the Capitol. I'd be like, oh, I mean... Does he kill anybody? No. 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 How, how does he get in? I, a group of people that follow this, uh, this, these Q posts seem to think that there's children locked underneath there, but they're going to break in and uh, ch children locked under. I'm fucking ripping off uh, Tim Dillon's bit. I'm not going to do that. But um, if you would have told me that that was uh, – <laughs> That's the season premiere of 2021. It wouldn't even phase me. Be like, oh, yeah, this, you know what the season premiere is. <laughs> this fucking guy's going to get in there and he's going to be doing Viking calls. Holding the sign that said Q sent me. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that seems about correct. That seems to be where this storyline is going. And I would not be phased one bit. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shake my system. You know, it wouldn't rattle my cage. It wouldn't seem out of the ordinary. Just the way things are going. And I, I hate to be one of these typical, oh, 2021 is probably going to be as fucked up as 2020. Hey, does this suck? Yeah, I'm getting a little pent up. Not going to lie. Getting a little pent up watching old videos of going out and uh, getting shit faced. And, and daddy needs to get out and tie one on. I've been just, f fuck, I've been fixing to just get absolutely pants shitting drunk. Gravel eating drunk, if you will. Me and the boys getting together and just knocking back everything in sight. You put a bottle of whiskey in me, I'll butt chug it. I don't give a shit. I don't even care what I got to do to make this happen. Hey, what, what needs to happen? If they need to put, throw up a 12-inch piece of cold steel up my ass and take my temperature with it just so I can get in the bar for fucking six hours to get pants shitting drunk, I'll do it. I'm not scared. I'm not scared one bit. In fact, I'll take it a step further if you really need to. Put one in my mouth and my ass at the same time, just so daddy can get about 19 drinks in him. Hmm? Completely gunned. And I'm going to be fucking tapping my toes and doing some electric slides on the dance floor to run, to run DMCs. It's tricky. That's what I want to be doing right now, but nope, can't do it. Can't do it. We got fucking wing, nut, wing nuts taking over the capital. Huh? We got a virus rampant in the streets. It's dropping people left, right, and center. And I can't get shit faced. What a joke. What a joke. Unfucking believable. You know, what's what's the big deal? I'll put my I'll put my goddamn life on the line just to go out. And have 19 whiskey shorts. I'd sit in a booth. I wouldn't even move. I, I just want some people around. Some, some Me and the boys. Nine deep. All sitting at a booth. Getting waxed. I'm talking just pants shitting. Gravel eating drunk. Girls telling us we're disgraces. You know, wives calling. At, and and you're, you're sending it right to voicemail. And she's thinking that you're dead. Meanwhile, you're just really just trying to have a good time. That's such a dude move, hey? A dude move here. I, I was talking about this last night with my buddy. You didn't like, there's, there's three types of males on this planet. There's boys. And that's just young adolescent men. There's men that have, that, that. You can look at a man and just like, there's man and then there's men, mm, men. So I should say there's four, but it, like that's a subcategory or a subgenre of men. 
You know, this, there's two types of men. This is going to be a science and a lot to explain. But, uh, the, okay, let's take it back to the beginning. There's three types of males <laughs> on this planet. There's boys, adolescent men, like we just said earlier. There's men, and then there's dudes. Dudes are caught between being a boy and a man. Haven't quite grown up yet, but we understand a little bit of like what's right and what's wrong. You know, you're riding par. You're par for the course. You're not, you're not quite to that point where you're defeated. You know, you're, you're not quite to the point where you've just like thrown in the towel. And it's like, hey, honey, why don't we go to the furniture store today? Huh? Why don't we go to the furniture store? Oh, oh, you know my friend Jackie? Yeah, you remember my friend Jackie? Oh, well, she's having a dinner party tonight. And, and I said, I just thought it'd be lovely if we all went, if we went together. You remember, you remember Jackie's husband, Ted? He's going to be there. He's a nice guy. Didn't he get along? Even though Ted's just this fucking dipshit, just a drip stain of a human. He's that guy that, you know, he's not totally successful, but he did okay in life. You know, enough to where he thinks that bragging about his fucking 2006 Acura is, uh, is just a it's a it's a statement to like flex on you even though you're like man eh, it's really nothing eh, that's, I mean it was a nice car fucking fourteen years ago but yeah yeah fuck heated seats Ted wow what used parking lot did you pick this up at oh I bought it brand new oh wow you had it you had it first one hey first owner wow wow good for you. Oh, yeah, and I put a stereo system in it. Oh, no shit. You put your own stereo? Yeah, yeah, that Ted's going to be there. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that nice? I thought you guys had a lovely conversation. And he's that old fuck that watches golf. The most boring sport on the planet to watch. Great time to play when you got the lads with you. Because you're usually getting tossed Right the fuck up. It, this podcast is going to revolve a lot about drinking because I'm pent up, all right? I'm pent up. But yeah, Ted is one of them guys. Sits in his recliner. Hey, oh yeah, uh, you're not going to believe it there, hack. I went and picked up a six pack of uh, pale ales. Would you enjoy one? Just one of those guys when he talks. You just want to grab a necktie, you know, because you know he works one of those fucking pussy jobs, and he's one of the he's a water cooler guy. Hey, hey, how was the weekend? <laughs> Did you get wild? <laughs> he's one of them fucking twats, and you know that he's got a necktie hanging in his closet, and you want to grab that thing and just strangle him. Watch the life leave his body, because you know a prison sentence would be well worth it at this point than to ever go to back to one of them fucking dinner parties that your wife wants you to go to. And that's part of being a defeated man. Now, a dude, what a dude would do was take, he would take that invitation. And you know you don't like my fucking most of your girlfriend or wife's friends, their husbands are usually fucking tools. Especially if you get brought into a new friend group. Small towns operate different. And I'm going to break this down for you. Small towns operate different because everybody knows one another. You know this guy, and nah, you, you never really hung around him, but you had a few pints with him at the bar, or like, you know, NFL Sunday in my hometown. All the dudes just kind of head down to the one bar, you sit there and drink. And then you get intermingling with these fucking people, and you realize, ah, hey, fuck, I, I didn't realize he's not, not that bad of a guy. But when you get into a bigger center, obviously people hang out with different people, they date uh, more people, you, you know, there's shit getting thrown into the mix all the time. So... <laughs> You, I'm, I don't. <laughs> I was probably like, "Oh fuck, you must be going through something here." No, not at all. But it's uh, at the moment that you get thrown into that that friend circle of your girlfriend's friends and their boyfriends, and you just realize like these guys are just a bunch of fucking tools. I don't have anything in common with these fucking puss nuts. So what do you do? You ruin it for yourself, okay? You know that this is a dude move. You go there, you get absolutely shit-faced. Make an ass out of yourself, you know? Call the host a fucking cunt. 
or tell her the cooking, you know, the turkey was just a little bit dry. Just a backhanded compliment or backhanded statement. Hey, time for a little ad. You, uh, you tired of walking around town like a fucking dipshit? Uh, you tired of everybody looking at you like the pathetic fucking loser that you are? Are you ready to reinvent yourself? Are you ready to feel like something more? Like the phoenix. You want to be the phoenix, don't you? Of course you do. You want to be the phoenix that rises out of the goddamn ashes. I know you do. I can see it in your fucking eyes. I can feel it. I can feel it in the air. And if you want to start that reinvention, head on over to DangerCatShop.com slash er, DangerCatShop.com. Use the promo code HACK20. Get 20% off your order today. We will be releasing new products in the future. And right now, these old ones are only going to be up for so long. We got them camo fucking long sleeves and they look tight. They look tight. You want an extra episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast? Perfect. You want to be an executive producer of the Uncle Hack Podcast? Even better. Join the Patreon today. You will get an extra episode every week released on Thursdays. That's right. While you're listening to this one, there's another episode waiting on the Patreon for you. Hell, there's a backlog if you're not on there. And you can hit that up. You can hit that up for a couple fucking shillings. You know what I mean? You can help your boy out. Throw him a bone. And your name can be down in the description below or at the roll credits if you're watching this on YouTube. So if you head to patreon.com slash dangercat69, you'll get an extra episode of the Uncle Hack podcast. Plus, whenever we uh, have some exclusive clips or behind the scenes footage, we always put it on there. Haven't really been out uh, to film anything, but in the near future, when uh, the world opens up again, we will be rocking it. So here we are. There's the ad read for today. Uh, Back to the podcast. Not a compliment. That's not a compliment at all, Brendan. Something that that she's going to, that the host or your girlfriend's friend is going to take offense to, and it's you know it's going to get brought up later, so that way you never have to go to one of these fucking things again. And if you're real slick with it, if you're real slick with it, you amp it up a little. Get a little shit face. Pull the cock out at the dinner table. That'll ensure that you never have to go to one of these fucking things ever again. And that's a dude move. You understand the backlash that's coming. And you know for the next two weeks you're going to have to fucking hear about it. But at the end of the day, yeah, you can tune that out. You're usually lost in your own headspace. You're like sitting there thinking like... I. the old lady was sitting there bantering in my ear the other, the other day, and I was sitting there thinking to myself, and I'd be like, "Did you? it's so funny to me that cartoons in the 90s were so fucking violent. They are hitting each other over the head with lead pipes, blowing each other up with dynamite. There wasn't a two-boy four in a scene that wasn't just wrapped around another one of their skulls. And I'm sitting there thinking about this, and I'm hearing about shit that I should be doing. Or uh, Honestly, I don't even know what the fuck she's talking about at that point, but if you throw it on, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you throw that yeah on autopilot, you're good. You're good. I'm telling you, I'm going to write, I got to write like a fucking Bible on dudeology. You know, dude, dude economics, dudeology. There's like a fucking trilogy to this. Just being a dude. Because like dudes are the best to get along with. Men, eh, eh. You gotta, you gotta be a role model. Who the hell wants to be that? <laughs> you gotta be a role model. Uh, uh, no thanks. Count me out. But dudes, just like there's like here, this this one right here. Uh, oh well, how do I know if I'm a dude or not? Here, I'll tell you this right now. Have you ever been in a bathroom, and when you're taking a piss, another guy comes in, right? You understand the rules here. You keep a urinal in between. You keep a urinal in between. And in fact, if there's four urinals, you always take the outside. That gives the option there. You know, you got to give the option. So that way, when that next guy comes in, he can either A, hop up one, or if he's a, if he's a dude, he's going to take the far left. It's just the way we go. That's just the way it goes. Now, if you finish pissing before him, this is the, this is where I'm getting at. This is the dude move right here. You pretend to wash your hands and then you walk the fuck on out of there like you washed your hands. Why do we do it? I don't know. 
It's because I think it's because it's an inconvenience. Then you got to go and like, be like wash for fucking, you know, put, pretend that you put your hands under the air dryer and all this fucking nonsense. It would be honestly easier just to wash your hands. But for some reason, we're like, ah, fuck, uh, my mom taught me not to piss on my hands or my dad taught me never to piss on myself. I'm good. I don't got piss on me. You just walk the fuck out. That's a dude move. That right there is a dude move. You find, <laughs> Why we do it? It's a mystery. There's no need not to wash your hand. Hands, uh, but you do it anyways. Never could quite figure that one out, but it is. It's a. It's an international dude move. Another guy's still at the stall because it's like there's like that guilty conscious. You know, ah, I don't want that guy to think that I'm a fucking pig. So I'll turn the tap on for a second and I'm gonna walk the fuck on out. And you know what? That guy behind you, honestly, he's not even thinking about that. He's probably lost in his own head about probably thinking about why 90s cartoons were so fucking violent in the 90s. And now it's just like SpongeBob going, Patrick. And he's thinking about the same goddamn thing you were thinking about earlier when your wife was giving you an earful. He don't give a shit, but somehow we think that they care. That's a dude move. It 100% is. I'll never figure that out. I'll never figure that out. And dudes, dudes, I always, uh, I always say this: the couple of drinks, couple of drinks. Every guy that I know that I would consider a dude has said, "Yeah, no, honey, I'm just going for a couple tonight. I swear to God, I'm not going to let this one slip away on me. I'm not." And then a couple beers go down, and you're like, "Yeah, I, I should get going. One more beer, and I'll hit the road." And everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too." I'm going to have one more here and then we'll, then we'll fucking hit the road. Then another guy walks into the pub and you haven't seen him in a bit. You get bullshitting, catching up, talking about the game, whatever the fuck it is. About the beef jerky that he just made off the moose he shot back up, uh, or up in, in uh, north, northern Alberta. You're talking about that shit. And the next thing you know, you're fucking drilled. You're pinned. You're pinned. It's midnight. You got 19 missed calls, 37 unread text messages from the wife. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And at that point, you just look and be like, I'm in shit already. What's another fucking hour or two? Huh? You know, if you're late for if you're late for work, you're not going to be more late. So you just decide to throw back a few more whiskeys and, and you get really send it to the moon. You really put yourself in the old liquor rocket ship and send yourself to planet fucking Zoltron. As you should, as a dude. That's just simple dudeology. If you're in one, you can't get out of one. Might as well stay in it. It's a slippery slope. Slide the bitch right down to the bottom. Why get off halfway? You're just going to have to walk down the fucking hill. Makes perfect sense to me. To the women listening to this, actually, the women that listen to this probably operate on a dude mind, but they're in a female body. You know what I mean? I feel like the women that would listen to this podcast operate on dudeology. They're in a female body, but yet they're they're, uh, they're difficult to date though because you're the same person. You almost need that balance. You need that kind of. You need the corrections officer to keep the inmates in check. And you being a dude are the inmate. And the correction officer, i.e. your wife, has to sometimes try and lay down the laws. But you're, at the end of the day, you're a dude. You're a convict. You're, you're, <laughs> you're a slave to the system. You can't help it. You were born this way. And it's okay to be this way. You shouldn't feel guilty about wanting to go for a few fucking cocktails. So what? You let one slip away on you. You put yourself on autopilot. The liquor did a little thinking for you. Is it really a crime? Is it really a crime? Did you do anything wrong other than finger bang the barmaid? It's not that bad. You didn't put your dick in her. And even if you did, you wouldn't remember anyways. The whole town knows you did it. But it is what it is. It is. It is what it is. (laughs) That's the thing about being a dude. You have a lot more fun than men and the boys because I feel like being a, being a dude, it's, it just, uh, it's hard. It's very tough to explain. If you don't get it, you'll never get it. 
if you get it and you understand and you're nodding your head while you're listening to this bullshit right now, you totally understand. You're like, fuck yeah. Know what dudes like? Sitting in silence. This is how to really tell if you're a dude. It might be just a guy thing, but a, a dude can just sit in silence. I love coming home to nothing. I, sometimes I will sit in the dark with no phone and just lay on the couch and just, like listen to the ambiance of outside of my home. And it's like distant cars driving by, you know, and you can lay there. And that right there is something that will send any female insane. You ever met a woman that can sit in silence? Not a fucking chance. They can't do that. Go fucking ballistic. Sitting there in your own thoughts. Guys sitting there, dudes sit in their thoughts all day long, you know? You're always thinking about, hmm, like stupid little shit. Hmm. I wonder if Conor McGregor's going to be Dustin Poirier here this month. I don't think he will. And then you you just go on this tirade on thoughts in your own in your own head because you don't have anybody to talk to, and it's fine. It's okay to be inside your own head for a little bit. Just don't think anything silly, boys. I hope everybody's do, out there doing okay. I can't wait for this to be the fuck open again, and I can come and sling some motherfucking jokes on y'all. I do have a big announcement next week, so be sure to tune in. Um... I don't know when the release date is, but your boy's in a roast battle. That's all I can say, and it's happening in Calgary next month. I don't have specific dates or links to tickets, but it is for sure going down. Um, I Yeah, I'm going to be doing a live podcast as well. I believe how it's going to work is it's in a uh, hotel of some sort. And there's balconies on these hotels, and that's the way they're able to get by on this. So there will be a live event. And I'm teaming up with uh, two comics that I really like. Um, He's been on the show. Actually, both of them have been on the show before. Brett Forte and Sam Walker, two comics out of Calgary that uh, I've been kind of linking with here lately. Awesome guys. Awesome guys. I'm hoping to have Brett. Well, Brett will be on the show there, on this show the Uncle Hack podcast when we're down there because we're going to do a live podcast after the roast battle to recap everything. I'm hoping it's going to be filmed and maybe they'll give me some of the footage so that way we can incorporate it into the podcast prior to the episode airing so that way we can, you know, then you get, you're up to speed. You understand? You're up to speed with everything. But it's going to be a fucking riot. And... W- now that I'm getting off track again, I'm, I'm just excited, man. I want to get the fuck out and make some motherfuckers laugh. Like, you guys are legends out there. Dudes get it. I kind of like how the the brand is going that way. You know, it's going more of a dude brand. Remember back in the day where you just buy Maxim magazines and think about drinking beers? That's what I like. That's what I like. I had my cocaine phase and was everything was a little fast and obnoxious. And I didn't really know what the hell I was trying to do. But I found my groove. I've uh, never been more comfortable in this state of mind. I like where my humor's at. I like where my head's at. I have my down days because I'm frustrated about this fucking virus because I can't go out and do the shit I want to do, like comedy, i.e. comedy, and coming out and meeting more people and uh, setting up tour dates to go to small town venues like um, in central Alberta, southern Alberta, BC, Saskatchewan, hopefully get out east to you beauties out there we'll get talking to some comedy clubs hopefully i can start crushing stages just locally get picked up by a um a talent manager or whatever a manager of some sort i don't know the proper ta- uh, title that i'd be looking for but i'm hoping to like really crush this in the next little while so that way i can progress the career in stand-up comedy faster and I can get to those places of, uh, you know, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Ontario, um, Quebec, <laughs> get out to Quebec and yeah, get out there. PEI, of course, I'd love to get out there in the East coast, make some of you fucking munyucks laugh and do some vlogging out there. Go check out Canada and yeah, just, uh, make, make this, make you sons of bitches laugh. Hopefully get big enough to get down to the States. This podcast keeps growing which is great, having a blast doing this, thinking of just wild shit in my head, like the dude stuff, dude versus men. Uh, Ladies, there you go. Date a dude. Your life will never be boring. If you date a dude, your life will never be boring. You never, you're like, what the fuck are you going to gossip with with some pussy like Ted, huh? The fuck are you going to gossip 
about with your friends with some pussy like Ted who comes home. Oh, yeah, you're not going to believe we got the Johnson file the other day. And uh, you know what? No, no, what fucking Zach looked over at me and said, you can't have foreign investments. You can't have foreign investments and claim a property tax on them. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but just go with it. You can't claim a foreign investments on property taxes. Oh, <laughs> and I says to them, that's going to be the most analyzed thing. You want that shit? No, fuck no. You need a guy that's going to keep you on your toes. You need a dude who on a Tuesday might just show up absolutely shit-faced and his kind jester is going to be handing you a half-eaten taquito. That's a dude move. He was thinking about you, but he got hungry on the walk home. He saved you half. That's a good guy right there. He's like, fuck, my babe's probably a little hungry. I'm going to dummy one and a half of these, and I'll save her half a taquito when I get home. She probably won't even be mad. That's a fucking drunk guy thought right there. She won't even be mad, man. I fucking brought her half a taquito. Oh, I'll keep her two, two slices of beef jerky in the bag, man. She'll be set. Tell me you haven't had that thought. Hammer drunk. Walking home, and and your your apology was food instead of just babe, I'm fucking loaded, you know. But I brought you some food. That's a good guy right there. You're not gonna get any better than that. You know what? Oh, I, you always hear these girls being like, oh, he needs to be rich. He, he needs to have a big dick. Oh, he needs to just take care of me and make sure my life's great. What about your life, fellas? Huh? You need a woman that's going to appreciate the small things in life. It sounds like all these bitches are fucking concerned about it. Like, how is he going to help me? How are you going to help yourself, first off? So, fellas, you know what? At the end of the day, these selfish cunts ain't looking out for you. You go, you have a few drinks. You kick your feet up. You want to have another Budweiser with that steak? You go right a fucking head. I'm giving you the nod. Commander-in-chief of the dude army right here. And when the ladies, when they start giving you shit, you'll be like, listen, I'm just listening to the fucking prez, Holmes. The commander in chief, the commander in cats. Does that sound, or is that kind of gay? That's kind of gay. That sounds, the commander in cats actually sounds kind of funny. The commander in cats told me I could, if you told your wife that after getting horse shit fucking pissed, just, oh, pancake flopped. Huh? Spaghetti squashed. <laughs> what do I go? Huh? It's like the it's like the Down syndrome version version of uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's what? Huh? Huh? Three beers? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You tell her the commander and cat that he told the commander and cat told me that I could get absolutely slaughtered tonight. That I could get absolutely shit tangoed and nothing and nothing you say will stop me. I am going to get piss loaded drunk tonight, bitch, and you ain't stopping me. Not me, not you, not your mom. Not, not my auntie, not even my mom is going to stop me from putting a bottle of Jack Daniels to my lips until I guzzle, <laughs> until I guzzle, and I am going to guzzle until I make a squirmish face and my body cannot handle it and it gives you that liquor shake, you know what I mean? When right as soon as you take off the that bottle from your lips, you take that last gulp and you get like a, whoo, yeah, whoo. Everything feels warm inside. You're getting a little bubbly. You're feeling fuzzy. Everything's good. Life, you, you're not quite drunk, but you're knocking on the door off. That is the best state of mind to be in. Like, you're just, you're floating, you know? I've never taken Percocet, but I imagine that's what it feels like. Like, that warm, fuzzy feeling. You, you hear all the heroin addicts talk about it. I get a little, I just feel like there's a, a warm hug around me. I feel like there's just an abundance of love. And that's the feeling when the booze starts kicking in. And it's not in, it's not in fourth gear. It's just in first and second. It's giving you a nice little, like you're slow dancing. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody's feeling warm and light. That's why I'm guzzling but lights. You didn't know I was an artist. You didn't know I was a singer. 
that that feeling. Oh God, can you tell I'm just craving to get drunk? I told you, told you when I told you at the beginning of this episode. I've just been want. I've been craving it. I made a little promo vid today, and I'm watching all these guys smash beers off their heads, having a good time doing stupid shit with their buds, and I'm like, fuck, I would love to do that right now. I would love just like twenty guys in a shop, just getting Lewis lit. And just letting stupidity go in overdrive. You know, six gear tapped, liquor town, here we come. Boozebagville. Load up the truck. Me and the boys are going to become, or put, we're running a political campaign to be the mayors of Booze Town. The booze bags of Liquorville. That's who we are. What's your party? The. F- uh, well, we're the, we're the fucking party brigade. What the fuck else? <laughs> what else do you think we are? <laughs> Listen, we're going to peel into the divorce. Uh, we're going to go see a few divorce lawyers before we go and head out on this political campaign just to make sure that everything's in check. So that way, when I come home, I know my shit's still mine. Okay. I'm going to have cops. Surveillance the house in case the wife gets a little squirrely. That Papa fucking Schlenko is downtown getting bingoed. Swiss fucking cheesed. Oh, I was going to say, is this thing dying? We're on the fucking, we're vaping. Yeah, you know how fucking great festivals and all that shit's going to be when this bitch uh, opens up again. Oh my God. Oh, you've been penting up all these liquor hounds for so long. And then you're just going to open up the cage and let them go hunting. Oh my Lord. Imagine the bars. Oh, it's, you're going to be like seeing people like you. A lot of people ain't going to know what to do. Bunch of piss tanks just out there walking the streets like zombies. Everybody's just been saving up their Serb checks and you just see a bunch of drunks walking around. That's what I feel like it's going to be a zombie apocalypse of drunk assholes in the streets every Saturday, every fucking Saturday, every Friday, thirsty Thursdays, check. You're going to see some guys just pissed to the gills all the time. Who is this? We'll cut that out. Is that going to go away? I sure hope not. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, sorry. There was a... I was getting a phone call there. They don't come very often. But yeah, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great fucking time when this this son of a bitch opens up again. Like I said, I'll do whatever it takes. Even for one night in fucking Bangkok, baby. I don't even give a shit. Sign me up. Sign me the fuck up if I got to take a 12-inch cold piece of steel up my ass to get my fucking therm- <laughs> temperature taken. <laughs> uh, put a thermometer up my goddamn schnoz. Make me airtight. I don't care. Get me in the goddamn bar for a few drinks with the fucking fellas. Get the boys back together for a little hoopla. I'm so, I'm just this old guy living in his past right now and be like, oh God, we're getting so old. Hey, we're getting so old. Just be nice to get the get the band back together for one last little gig. Hey, how fun would that be? It sucks. We're all out here just wasting away. Wait. Wasting away in Coronaville. Can't even fucking tweet anything anymore. Can't tweet. Can't go on YouTube. Can't do fuck all. (laughs) I wonder what comedy is going to look like after this. You know, after this massive purge on Twitter. uh, I know it's more like conservative lunatic I shouldn't even say lunatic. Yeah, actually, it is. A lot of lunatics are getting the fucking axe. Not a lot of them, but uh, guys that are riding the edge of extreme. 
I don't know what's going to happen to me with this. I sure the fuck hope I don't get uh, the axe from the social media oligarchs. That would really suck. I've spent the past three years building a brand only for, you know, Google to be like, oh, we don't think we like this. That would that would chap my ass. It would suck. I don't know what, what would happen or where I would... Uh, I'd probably, um, I'd probably just produce content on Patreon. I think that would be the only place. If I got, if I got waxed from everywhere, I can't see it happening. We've cleaned up quite a bit and we try to keep everything more funny than, uh, than, uh, like being politically charged. I'd rather it be more jokes than anything else and, and try to keep the humor as, as hefty as possible. And even this podcast, you know, this isn't a political podcast. I just like right there. I just went on a fucking 45 minute rant about dudes versus men. Fucking men. It's being a dude. That's all we are. That's all we're trying to do out here. Hey, gentlemen, we're just trying to be dudes. We're just trying to have a little fun. 90% of the time, we're not educated enough in politics to be talking about it anyways. What do we want to do? We just want to have a good time. We just want to have a little party. That's all. You just want to kick the feet up. I'm excited to get traveling again. I want to go see a little bit of this world before I fucking die. You know, I want to see what Australian titties look like. That's what I want to see. Not not Australians in Canada titties. I want to see Australians in Australia titties. In the flesh. Not, not, not a picture or anything. I'm not throwing out, uh, hey, why don't you Snapchat me the, them titties? By all means, if you want to Snapchat me your titties, go right ahead. Not 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 going to look at them, okay? We're not not going to take a peek, as long as you're of age. We don't need that. I don't need, you know, I'm not rich enough to have an island to fucking ship kids to. I'm not quite there yet. Matter of fact, I'm light years away from that. I highly doubt I will be as rich as that man, nor be able to ever get away with some shit like that. I'm not implying that I'm a pedophile and that I want to get away with things like that, but that just seems to be the thing. As soon as you get too much money, it's like, man, they're looking pretty. Uh, they're looking pretty good over there. They're at the fucking Chuck E. Cheese, aren't they? They're looking pretty good. You know that that kid over there has got quite the arm on her for playing skee ball. I don't know what it is, but as like it, it seems to be like a rich white guy thing, isn't it? Like a fucking really wealthy old white guy thing. All of a sudden, you're diddling kids. What the fuck up? What is up with that? I guess that's been the last thing. Man, I've never been rich, and I hope to God I get to feel what it's like in this lifetime. But I highly doubt that's ever going to cross my mind. You know what I mean? Like the last thing I uh, I would think about, I'd be like a bit, you know what? That again, that's a dude brain. Back to the dude brain. If Uncle Hack got very wealthy, I'd be like, hey, how much do you think it would cost for me to rent a field and get Motley Crue to come play and we'll just let people come? Bring your own, we'll, we'll, we'll bring a fucking a goddamn semi full of beers we're going to put Motley Crue at the middle of a fucking corn maze. And we're just going to watch people get shit-faced and have unprotected sex in the bushes. How does that sound? Well, it sounds like Woodstock. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to call it Cornstock, though. You know me. I'm, al- I'm, always, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always promoting the town of Tabor. And, it, and it's a damn shame that they just they don't give me a bone back, you know. I'm trying. I'm trying my best to put that town on the map. We haven't. We haven't had. Uh, actually, that's a lie. We've had some decent representation, but they don't really carry it. You know, they're not proud. You never hear. Oh yeah, I'm from Tabor. Tabor. Trying to put it on the map. Trying to make the town known. I'm doing my damnedest out here, and just a bone back. You know, a little. A little congratulations. A little thank you would be just necessary. But you think they would do that? No, God, no. Not in this lifetime. Not in this lifetime. I'm doing my damnedest to make sure that Tabor is well known around this planet. 
by constantly promoting that. I would do that. I would, I, if I made a fuck ton of money, I would pay Motley Crue at the end of Harvest to come on down. We'll set up a stage. First cornfield whacked down. We're setting up a stage, getting torqued in a field, listening to kickstart my heart while some unprotected, unprotected sex happens in, in some, uh, in some bushels, in some bushels of hay. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd feel like, I would feel like a king of the world if I could do that. Woodstock 99. We were just looking at that uh, the other day. And the headliner was uh, Rage Against the Machine. Fun fact for you. There's your fun fact for the day. What do I got else I got for you today? Yeah, it's uh, crazy times that we're living in. I hope to God that everybody's keeping it intact. I feel angry a lot lately, though. That's maybe that's it. I do. I'm I'm good for a good reset. I'm good for a a good old uh, just a, a shit fest. Just getting absolutely piss pounded drunk. Maybe that'll just knock me even keel again. It'll be a good reset. You know, like that seems to be like a good reset from time to time is when you're you're in a slump. And I'm not saying that boozing is a good way to get out of it, but like if you're you're in a bit of a slump, you're in a like a uh, weird headspace. I haven't been drinking much during this past year. It just like it doesn't it doesn't feel right. You know, I'm a uh, I'm an extroverted kind of person. Like, if I'm having a few cocktails, I like to be out and about. And then when I'm hungover, I'm the most fucking... I just need, like, silence and shitty fucking 90s action movies. That's all I need. Oh, God. But to get shit-faced right now, it just... Uh, I don't know. I just... It doesn't feel right. I can't sit at home and have a few cocktails by myself. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit well with me. I like to go out and enjoy some drinks with some fucking funny guys or or women. <laughs> women be funny. <laughs> Holy. This podcast is getting ridiculous today. Women being funny, eh? That's a joke by itself. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I hope everybody's keeping it together out there. Don't get, don't be getting too fucked up. If you're having issues, man, reach out. I'm, we like to dick around on here, and and uh, you know we we like seeing people have a lot of fun. But if it's affecting your day to day life, man, fucking reach out. I don't care if it's to me and my DM. This is this year's been uh, hard enough. It's already shaping up that this one's gonna be a shit show too. Or this past year's been hard enough. This one's shaping up to be a shit show. Is what I should say. So reach out, reach out to somebody, talk to people, don't be shy to slide in my DM. I appreciate, uh, you know, all the listeners throwing me a message or commenting on shit. It, it uh, I think that's been keeping me sane this whole time. I went through a tough year prior to this and uh, found my, my footing in life again with comedy and just being funny and having fun with this this shit again. And it uh, has led me down the right path. So whatever it is that you're going through or if you're looking for something new, um, now's the time to try at least. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? The world's already uh, a dark place. You don't need to make it any darker by fucking hunkering yourself down. Get out, try some new shit or, you know, learn. Learn something. Learn, get, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck you're into, but uh, it seems like uh, I see, I heard a good point and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to start a podcast. If you're serious about doing it, then do it. But I think a lot of people are just sitting around and being like, ah, I need something to occupy my time. And this is just going to kind of fucking wilter off. And if you're really looking to do that, then, then do it. But what I'm getting at here is if there's something that you've always wanted to try, you know, this year I picked up snowboarding. Um, since everything else is closed, I, I fucking, my buddy gave me a snowboard. Uh, I was able to get a lift pass out there in, in Jasper and had a blast. I, I grew up skateboarding, so 
I've always been a fan of extreme sports and I got out there on the hill and have, have myself a fucking time. I'm no Sean White actually far from, but I will catch him one day. Imagine that. Old fucking hack daddy with a gold medal around his neck. Oh boy. Oh boy. The Tabor Sports Hall of Fame would have a fucking demon to deal with. Imagine that. I got to go knocking on their door and be like, what else do I need to prove to you? How many plaques do I got to put on this fucking wall before you sons of bitches finally own up and be like, yeah, you know what? You are a generational athlete. Why have we not been promoting the hell out of you? And I'll be like, you tell me. Must be the deeply embedded corruption in this goddamn town. Politics corrupted from the federal right down to the municipal fucking level. Right down to the town council. Unreal. Unreal. Guys out here trying to make a legacy and you can't give them a little bit. Hmm? You just can't throw them a fucking bone with a little bit of meat on it. A little bit of meat on it. That's all I'm saying. Sons of bitches. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you again for tuning in to another Uncle Hack podcast. I don't know what the timestamp is. I might be cutting a little bit short today. But I hope you had a good time. Like I said, reach out, talk to somebody. Don't be uh, don't be so shy. Don't be ashamed. Try some new shit. Reinvent yourself. Have a little fun. I love seeing guys out there fucking getting it. Whether you know, whether it's a new career, new hobby. Even if it's, uh, you know, you, you've been sitting here thinking about uh, you trying your hand at OnlyFans. You're going to do fucking trick shots with your cum every time you snap one off. I support you. I support the hell out of you. Know that I got your back. And I thank you again for tuning in to another Uncle Ag podcast.